Welcome back. The giant panda has long been a symbol of endangered species. At Michigan State University, Dr. Jack Liu has spent years studying not only that animal, but also the animal with the greatest impact on the panda's habitat, man. One of our main goals in this project is to try to understand uh, human impacts and how that's influencing panda behavior. The Oolong Nature Reserve in China is not only home to the giant panda, but to the people living within its boundaries. And the use of the natural resources within the reserve has a direct impact on the panda's habitat. Historically, they have survived because they moved to different places. But now if you have a frontier in which there is people with agriculture and roads and development, they simply cannot move. The pandas depend on the forest for two things. One is food, and then also as the cover. And if you cut down the trees, then you destroy their houses. Farming, increased population, and the use of timber as fuel has shifted the delicate balance within the reserve, prompting strict conservation policies. The government uh, check what's going out and what's coming in. And so there are checkpoints uh, at the gate of uh, uh, the reserve. Another concern for Dr. Liu is the increased traffic to the reserve, creating a much larger human footprint. Uh, more and more nature reserves are open for ecotourism. And uh, because the people are doing this quickly, without the environment the long-term consequences. So there is a potential risk for those nature reserves of, uh, or which are open to ecotourism to suffer in the long term. Team members use satellite data consisting of elevations and vegetation layers to track both the natural and the man-made changes within the reserve. Habitat. What is the climate effect on habitat? Is what's the climate, potential climate effect on forest. Uh, what we're looking here is just a 3D representation of the landscape in Wolong Nature Reserve. And then using these satellite data in combination with uh, field uh, data uh, collected using GPS, we develop models to say, okay, how do these uh, differences in human agency and, and the changes through time in this human agency affect what we are seeing in terms of the habitat for the pandas? The newest tool for researchers is a collar-based GPS tracking system that will allow the most accurate data on the pandas' migration patterns. It's very difficult to get a count of how many pandas because they're very elusive and they're very afraid of people. And that's one of the things that's uh, potentially powerful about this technology because it will send back to you a location about where that animal is at that given time. So a latitude and a longitude and an altitude of where that animal is. And that information is useful because we can get some more detailed information about uh, what kind of habitat pandas like. If we know what kind of habitat pandas like, then we know what kind of habitat we need to conserve, where we need to put our efforts into thinking about uh, conservation and protection of the habitat, and also potentially restoring areas to better habitat. Dr. Liu and his team hope their data will help fellow researchers around the globe. And the use the information and the approaches that we develop in one spot and then apply this, uh, the methodologies to other areas. And uh, not just the, for the pandas, but also for the conservation of other species. Currently, only about a thousand pandas remain in the wild. Dr. Liu's research has been shared at many conferences and has helped shape Chinese environmental policy.